Thank you, everyone. Good morning. I believe it's still morning. Today, I'm going to be taking you through a journey of my portfolio of work. And this portfolio of work is located in the space where architecture and fine art meet. It is my manifesto as an architect to say that this space is not a grey area. It is finite, it is clear, and it offers us a clear canvas on which we can draft new ideas for an existing planet. Architecture is a language, and the main way of communicating this language is through drawing. Architects draw. It is my manifesto as an architect also to say that architects are not only architects, they are artists as well. And it's my belief that the drawings that they do in the first stages of building design should be elevated to the state that they are seen as artworks. My group of drawings and my work as an architect is not to produce a building. My product is not a building. My product is the representation of a building which I place inside architectural space. So, let's start the journey. We start in Venice in 1999 where I was a student. And this represents the idea which is at the center to my manifesto. I'm interested in the representation of architecture within urban space. So I'd like to point to you in this image, there is an urban screen, which is actually a photographic print, which is placed inside the urban environment. The urban environment represented within the urban environment. As you look closer, you can see that the urban screen is actually a print. The idea here, architecture inside architecture. Staying in Venice, I became enamored by the place where I was living. And I started to learn about architecture, and I started to learn about the space by drawing it by free hand, by drawing what I saw. Drawing is the mode of communication for architects. This was a view from where I used to live as a student. I miss it greatly. <laughs> The, law, the, the line took me from Venice and drew me towards Johannesburg, where I started working professionally. I started to become interested in iconic buildings, buildings which had real status and stature. You'll recognize this abstract drawing shows the former Johannesburg Stock Exchange building. So, moving on, we return, the journey comes to Cape Town, which is my hometown. And I get the opportunity in this project to put into practice the idea of the urban screen which I first saw in Venice. So we're looking at the Sphere Contemporary Exhibition 2010. And the brief to me as architect is to design a device which allows people to access the building, how to get into the exhibition. The idea for me was to take a screen which could act as both a ramp and also a device that could show graphics and film. So it was a screen that you could wrap within to take you up to the stair, up through the stair to the place where the actual exhibition was held on the second floor. Here you see in this diagram that it's a vertical element that takes you up to the second floor of the building. There's actually an axial staircase in the building, but I've decided to circumvent that to place this large urban screen in front of the building, making a statement. As I said, one of the ideas was for the screen to be cinematic. I wanted you to be able to see films from the public square, the parade in front of the city hall. And finally, the conglomerative image. Here you see the screen and its thickness in which the people go up to the second floor. And you can see images are printed onto the screen. So the idea is to advertise the Sphere Contemporary Exhibition. So here, architecture on one side, art and the other are married. Taking further into the interior, after the idea of the exterior screen, how can we make interior screens? This image is important in telling you about the idea of the singular image. I want you to take architectural drawing and bring it into the interior of architecture to animate that space. Here you can see the singular image is based on the interior and animates that space in a way to give it depth. With the idea of singular image, I move on to another project. And I'm trying to think, how can I make singular image work in a collective? So this project is very much about 
binding singular images together to create a family of drawings. This is an exercise in corporate identity for a company that is a construction company in Switzerland. So the idea is to take the drawings of their buildings, my interpretation of their buildings, their portfolio, and to create a body of work, a collective of various drawings to animate their interior. Again, architecture inside architecture. This is the idea. Switzerland is a place which gave birth to Le Corbusier, uh, an architect of the modern era. And this image brought me closer to the idea of the study of the icon. I wanted to say to myself, how can I take singular images and repeat them to become motifs? The idea here is to dilute the icon. So when you repeat the image, a fabric or wall covering motif is created. But the idea is bigger than that. I want you to dilute the icon to the point where a pattern is created. Now, the pattern is collective. It's about the overall. It's about the city. And in the next drawing, you'll see that the space between buildings, for me, is important. The space between buildings is the, way, is the place where people meet, where, where cities breathe, and where people meet and collect and converse. Buildings hold hands and make spaces for people between them to hold hands and converse. This is St. Peter's uh, in the Vatican, which lent itself very well as a drawing to display this idea. From one modern icon in Ronchamp by Le Corbusier, we return to Pretoria, and this building is the Pretoria Art Museum. It's a modernist building and an ode to the Barcelona Pavilion by Miss van der Rohe. It provides for me a canvas. It allows me to test these patterns. How do they work in internal space? How does architecture inside architecture work? So I take the bolts of fabric, I take the designs, and I place them in the facade to animate both exterior and interior of the building. This image talks about the idea of elevating architectural drawing to the level of art. The various motifs are framed, printed on good fine art paper, and presented as artworks. From one gallery to another, the privilege to exhibit overseas and to take uh, a body of work to the 10th Triennial for Form and Content and the Museum of Applied Arts in Frankfurt. Up my sleeve, I took a design which is Cape Townian based. It's a building in Cape Town called Old Mitchell Heights and displays very well the idea of the space between buildings being very important. You can see in the following image that it becomes a good backdrop, a retiring image for images that are in the, in the foreground. Here we have a dialogue between various arts, architecture and fashion design in dialogue. You can see in this image the context of the wall within the space of the gallery. Here again, the idea, architecture inside architecture. The following image speaks more about a collective as well. I'm not interested in the icon, I'm interested in a collection of buildings. A collection of buildings in this case creates the foliage of a tree, which is repeated to make the pattern, and is symbolic in a sense of the vision of a certain property development company in Johannesburg, which is prospecting in Jefferson. So these trees talk about urban landscape, which is also important. Speaking of landscape, we go to the Cape, to a winery. The project here is to, dis to depict the building in the context of the, of the landscape, how it relates to the land and to the vine. The land and the vine are the things which produce the wine, which is its product. So we're talking contextually again. An understanding of how the building sits in the site produces a site section. The mountain gives rise to the building, which is made of rammed earth. And you can see that you go through to the vineyards on the left. So the building's partners in the landscape are joined in one line. Here you can see how the mural animates interior space. The idea here is landscape inside architecture. Effectively, again, architecture inside architecture. 
a detail of the actual building which is made of rammed earth relating it to the mountain. And you can see in this image how the mule becomes a directional device. You come in from the mountain, are drawn by the line to the center of the building, which is the building itself, and then directed towards the vineyards, which is about being in the landscape. In the landscape again, here we're talking about horses, a beautiful long face. The idea here is to represent landscape within landscape. The task is to depict a particular horse which is belonging to that actual farm and to depict it in its actual natural environment. So the idea here is that the canvas becomes the gateway to this particular farm. And you can see it was designed, the wall was designed, I had to create the canvas. But at the same time, this experience of drawing the landscape for me was really wonderful. It gave me a sense of being in the world on my own, painting in the landscape, really being immersed in a beautiful, strong experience. This is Chaila time for some, but I had to carry on because I was scared of the rain. <laughs> Again, in the morning there was this beautiful mist and I would leave to incredible sunsets. It was very good to have man's best friend. He never left my side until I had to pack up for the day. Galileo. <laughs> the idea here is to represent the buildings of the landscape in the landscape itself. So I like the Venetian idea of a screen representing the urban idea. Inside the screen, here we have the landscape inside the landscape. And this is the final view. Borrowing from the idea in the winery of the site section <coughs> being about the landscape relationship to the building, this project was a great challenge because I had to produce a mural which was based on the site section of how the building sits relative to the mountain and relative to the forest, but it was not to be a drawn, painted mural. It had to be a three-dimensional mural. And so I chose to use concrete, and the site section took on this form, with the mountain represented by a concrete tablet relief, the building by a simple expansion joint, and the forest by a shelf wall which related to the proportion of the front of the house relative to that forest itself. Here you can see in two dimensions how the concrete tablet, line and shelf relate to the backdrop of the mountain which is a strong informant on the landscape. In its physical manifestation I had to be very careful to detail it correctly so that it wouldn't fall on someone's head because a concrete tablet of that size could give you a headache, I'm quite sure it was, it was by a pool area. But the idea in this drawing, in this image, is to show that the extrusions and impressions in this concrete tablet relate directly to the ground floor plan of, of the house and also pick up on the idea of the fissures and folds inside the mountain. So in its overall manifestation, you can see that the concrete murals relate to the folds of the mountain and to the house in its geometric form, therefore marrying landscape with architecture. That's the idea. I now come to a very powerful part of this journey. Um, we're looking at Malapa, Cradle of Humankind. And this is the site of the recent discovery of Australopithecus sediba. Um, here, we part of a, a drawing workshop which is about the relationship between architecture and archaeology, and it's done through a workshop format. So, here we are drawing in the landscape, relating to one another spatially and relating to the landscape. Here the idea is drawing in community. Here the idea is not a digital Ubuntu, but one which is an analog Ubuntu. It's important that drawing by hand as architect still is kept alive. We cannot leapfrog drawing by hand. It is imperative that architects draw by hand, and that is becoming a danger in our society that we don't have as much paper in our drawing offices as before. So this was a really rich experience in being an architect and drawing. It was wonderful. 
This is an artwork called La Ultima Cena, which means the Last Supper. And it was composed and done by an, an architect called Elena Rocky, who was the artist in residence at the Nyrox Foundation, where this drawing on origins was held. And her message here is similar to the one of the buildings holding hands and the space between the buildings. Here she's saying that the space between people, these are drawings that she did of the various participants' bodies. She's saying it's an architecture of compassion, that between two bodies we create a space where we can have a conversation. And that conversation needs to be about how can we make better cities. Finally, in terms of an image, Part of this presentation is for me to tell you who I am. And this is the complete image of who I am. This is a drawing of my body, which was a mural in the exhibition for the uh, drawing on origin. And it was one of the drawings that was given to the convener of the drawing on origins, on which she could base those drawings that sit next to each other to create that space of conversation. So, this drawing is of my body. On the right, my shoulder. On the left, shoulder again, foot in between. And the semblance of a skull in the center. The, the artwork is called Scaffold for Heart. Scaffold being the structure, architectural. Heart being the art, the spirit. So, in conclusion, Straight back to my introduction. The space between architecture and fine art is a crisp area, a canvas upon which we can draft new ideas for an existing planet. Thank you. Okay.